involved in telling those stories to young people and seeing them engage in that? Oh, um, I think um, when you, shall we say, take a school chick, school kid, and um, you take them to a relative's grave, and you've got to remember, especially First World War, we're now over 100 years on, mm -hmm. and um, no one's ever visited before. This is the first, first, first time anyone's visited, and they're, you know, they're only, what, 14, 15 years old. And all of a sudden, it gives them an interest. And I think Tony will agree, they go back off that and it starts their family history because they go back to their... Hopefully, they've got the grandparents are still alive and they ask the grandparents and the grandparents will then give them... And um, I've heard of many people from these trips go back and start the family and find out things they never knew before. I think I heard a lot of that dialogue on the trip that I kept or went with you to the battlefields. There was a lot of talk of grandparents and wanting to find the names. I know that was something you, you yeah. were keen to try and help That's them right. with. Um, and I assume that just really kind of personalises the whole experience for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It, was, it was one I went on, I remember, because it sticks in my mind. And this was, again, a school tour. And this was actually the teacher. And it was the name of one of his relatives. And it was up there on on a memorial. He didn't have a grave, it was on the memorial. And he looked up and he pointed to it and he said, you know what, he said, it's not just a name on a wall, is it? And that stuck in my mind as something like that. And another one where I had some Canadian kids and we were going specifically to one of the Second War Cemeteries south of Caen and we were going to look for the particular grave for this, this girl. And in we go, we find the grave and as you say, child's in tears you know it was first time ever but as we were leaving one of the boys noticed another headstone near the near the, the gateway with a with a with a surname on it which rang a bell he said i'm sure that's a member of my family and he got on the phone to his grandmother and said look i'm standing in front of this grave and it's and it's private x and she said oh that's that's your long lost etc <laughs> and and there out of the blue there's this no this use. family had found uh, uh, they hadn't been aware yeah. that he was buried there, and suddenly, just coincidentally, right. we found it. Yeah, yeah, it's priceless when that happens, isn't it? Yeah. I remember I did a trip. Uh, I did the Great Escape in Poland, and uh, went back there. And it wasn't until I'd been round the camp of Stalingrad three, and the guy told me he'd been a prisoner there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm. You just can't buy that no. information. The moments like and those. Unfortunately, of course, they, they've all gone now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The last one, Chuck, Chuck Lyons, died about five years ago. Okay. At 101.